The following is an audio version of my recent blog, Next Gen 911, Creeping Down from the Great White North. I'm Mark Fletcher, and I'm the Vice President of Public Safety Solutions at 911 Inform. The Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission, known as the CRTC, is the agency that regulates and supervises broadcasting and telecommunications in the public interest, very similar to the role of the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, in the United States. The CRTC's Emergency Services Working Group, called ESWIG, is composed of telecommunication service providers, public safety answering points, as well as 911 industry specialists, and works to address the issues relating to 911 services, as well as a technical and operational implementation of those services, including next generation 911. Now, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, they had embarked on an initiative of next gen 911 trials in the ECCs and had socialized some fairly aggressive dates for next gen 911 migration and the ultimate decommission of the legacy Canadian E911 network infrastructure. Now, as with most other activities, this was all put on hold for about a year and a half, but has recently got back on track with a brand new timeline. This new timeline has the ECCs able to start their next gen 911 deployments in just nine short months. Now, also on this date, the next-gen 911 service providers in Canada need to have their networks ready to accept and deliver calls, and that network is slated to utilize a NENA I3 compliant infrastructure, along with I3 protocols delivering that service as a public safety standard. In a bold statement, the CRTC has once again announced a date in the near future where all connections to the 911 network in Canada will be NG911, rendering the E911 network a wasteland of fallow copper circuits. And that date is now March 4th, 2025. That's just 1,347 days after this blog is scheduled to be published. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. So what does this change mean? Well, while any change can be disruptive, this particular change in technology is well worth the effort and brings forth additional capabilities, services, and efficiencies that streamline the delivery of emergency services to the public. In the current legacy E911 system, calls are routed using a location database that was designed to perform these primary functions. Number one, determination of the 911 caller's location and associating that location to a valid street address that's listed in the Master Street Address Guide, or MSAG. Number two, based on that MSAG entry, assigning an emergency service number, or ESN, which is used to route the emergency call to the proper agency for handling. And finally, three, automatically deliver the associated address location information using the caller ID automatic number identification, or ANI, to retrieve the automatic location information, known as ALI, from the state jurisdictional databases. Now, much to the surprise of many seasoned professionals, this information is actually communicated through antiquated analog modems at 9,600 bits per second over point-to-point -point frame relay circuits on an infrastructure that's remained mostly unchanged for decades. And although functional, they're far from efficient by today's standards and capabilities. The systems are also text-based, with no ability to transport any IP-based multimedia information. NextGen 911, on the other hand, utilizes GIS, that's Geographic Information Systems, which is a framework providing the ability to utilize spatial and geographic data. Modern GIS user applications allow interactive queries, provide the ability to store both spatial and non-spatial data, and then share the results of these queries, presenting the information as maps. Now for public safety, this becomes a significant advantage, especially when assigning resources to incidents. Now to handle a next-gen 911 call, the legacy routing mechanisms are retired and new emergency call routing functions, or ECRF, and location validation functions, LVF, are deployed in their place. The ECRF uses location information to accurately route the 911 calls to the appropriate PSAP, and this new geospatial call routing model provides better accuracy, which can reduce the number of 911 call transfers due to misrouted calls, 
and increases the operational efficiency while reducing the response times of first responders. That provides a net result of saving more lives and property. A penny saved is more than a penny earned. A common outcry heard from many NG911 skeptics is that this new infrastructure will cost far too much money and the existing network is in great need of repair. Well, unfortunately, it's absolutely true that the aging legacy E911 network has been ignored from a technology refresh perspective for years. It's also very likely that diverting money from a new system to maintain that existing infrastructure may not be the best investment. There are just so many operational efficiencies that are delivered by NG911, as well as resiliency, redundancy, and reliability. Stuff that's kind of important for 911, as well as the fact that over-the-top next-gen 911 service networks have emerged to deliver advanced information and services in a network that's parallel to the legacy infrastructure. Now, in doing this, a shortcut detour has been created that allows connectivity to occur today. And as it turns out, a very functional next-gen 911 pathway can be established providing valuable information directly to the ECC now. Now, the unique environment this creates is one where the origination network can provide emergency call session media in an NG911 compliant connection and deliver it through one of several of these non-traditional OTT providers. And this clears the way for the ECC to upgrade their facilities to NG911, as well as the enterprises in the originating networks. This gives us the unique opportunity where both ends of the connection get moved to current technologies, while not having to wait for the carrier connectivity in the middle. It's already there with the OTT providers. Now, when the legacy networks finally retire themselves and get upgraded to modern IP networks, those endpoint connections are simply moved from the OTT provider to the NG911 direct provider. There's no change on the origination or termination network from an equipment perspective. And the only thing required is testing the facilities after the change. Now granted, some hardcore Nina i3 heavy hitter architects will probably take some issues with my concepts, but there's no denying that at a high level, there may be some merit to my thinking. And while my idea might not be perfect as I presented it here, you have to admit it is thought-provoking as presented. Whether you understand Next Gen or not, and just maybe it's inspirational to someone who knows a little bit more than me. That wraps up this audio version of my latest blog, Next Generation 911, Creeping Down from the Great White North. I'm Mark Fletcher. I'm the Vice President of Public Safety at 911 Inform. Thanks so much for listening. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at Fletch911. And be sure to check out the rest of my blogs and podcasts at Fletch.tv. Thanks for listening. Stay safe. We'll catch you next time.